Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Cece. And I'm Nick. Welcome to our guest house in West Palm Beach, Florida. Please come and take a look around. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. I'm Cece Bowman. I'm Nick Bowman, and we're in West Palm Beach, Florida, in our guest house. So the backstory behind this is we're actually neighbors. We live next door, and we've been here for about seven years. During that time, our family has grown, and we needed space for our little ones to run around in, and we wrote a number of letters to the lovely neighbors next door who finally gave in or were ready to sell to <laughs> us. And really the idea behind it was put up a couple of soccer goals, a big trampoline. But what came with that land is a little dollhouse for Cece to play with. <laughs> and I actually never saw the house before we bought it. Cece was the one that took the phone call saying, we're ready to sell. Uh, she said, yes, but let me check with my husband, but yes, we'll buy it. And we really did buy it sight unseen. The first time we walked into the house, we really had no idea what we were walking into, but we knew the family who owned it before had been here since 1972. Uh, they raised six children here. They're the nicest family and nothing had changed, I think, since 1972. So there was blue kind of shag carpet everywhere. Um, curtains all over the windows so you couldn't see really outside much. Um, so what we walked into was kind of a um, dark sort of old house and we were so excited when we finally closed on the house on June 1st, so just about six or seven months ago. We t ripped the curtains off and actually ripped all the carpet out ourselves. Um, to reveal some true treasures uh, that were lying underneath. So for example, there's a beautiful terrazzo floor here that you'll see later. But um, as we stripped the house of all those heavy things, it became this light, pretty space. And we realized that we had stumbled across something really special. My first impression was I didn't know people had carpet in Florida. And then I learned about popcorn ceilings as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> we had our work cut out for us. The biggest challenge of the renovation was just the amount that we had to do. Um, all the windows basically had cracks in them. And at first we started by saying, okay, we're gonna do as little as possible um, to bring this up to snuff. and as we went, instead of replacing just a pane of glass here and there, we realized that we really were just gonna get so much more into this that we had to bite the bullet. So we got all new windows, we skim coated all the ceilings, we had a terrazzo company come in and restore the flooring. Uh, and so those were kind of the biggest construction things that we did. Other than that, we didn't touch anything. 
in the house, really. I think it helps that someone broke into the house. <laughs> someone literally smashed one of the windows and we thought, okay, we have to repair one very big window. We might have to rip the Band-Aid off and just do all of them and make them shatterproof or hurricane proof and actually um, just go all in. That was probably our biggest unforeseen expense, but it's really opened up the house and gives it so much light at the same time. Yeah, it was a blessing. <laughs> The design direction for the house is different from our house because every single thing in here is new. Um, we wanted a place where the kids can come in from the yard and jump on the sofa with messy feet and not care. Um, so everything was done based on the fact that we knew it would get used and loved and we could spill red wine and not really care. So there's nothing precious, there's nothing super sentimental. Um, we just wanted it to be pretty, and which is totally different from the house we live in, <laughs> right? Um, it's also kind of an, a chance for me, um, I'm an interior designer for Kemble Interiors in Palm Beach, and it has been a fun opportunity to kind of get my hands dirty um, with some of the work that we do for our clients too. So you'll see in some of the rooms we've stenciled walls and Nick and I did it ourselves. <laughs> um, and it's really just a colorful, bright, happy design um, that we think fits in with what people like to see in Palm Beach. Welcome to our living room. This is the first room you walk into when you enter our house. Um, and what's amazing about this house is that when we first purchased it, it had blue shag carpet wall to wall everywhere that you can see. And the day we closed on the house, we personally ripped it out. So what was underneath, which was a big mystery to us, ended up being this beautiful terrazzo floor that we had a restoration company come in and completely sand down and re-polish and make perfect. Um, which is awesome because it's casual, it's very Florida, it also just lends itself to the fact that we're in a 1950s ranch house in West Palm Beach. Um, this is just really classic, so we were lucky to find this underneath the rug. Um, this room is where we have cocktails, we entertain. Um, again, when we first bought the house, the curtains were covering all the windows. You could not see outside. There were shutters, awning shutters above the windows that covered your sky view. So we removed all of that and what was revealed was this bright, sunny place um, that we love to hang out now. Coming back to the floor, I think <clears throat> this is probably my favorite thing that we inherited. And I think it's worth saying that it's always worth peeking what's under the floor and seeing what may or may not be there. This really opens up. I think the light, it has some color in it, but it's bright, it's white. It allows us to play off it. And you never know what's under there. It, it took some TLC to bring it back to life and restore it. But I think it's my favorite thing that we inherited at least. The walls are a Benjamin Moore soothing green. Um, Nick and I actually went to the paint store, which going to the paint store as a couple is terrifying. It should never be done, but we, we didn't disagree. <laughs> so we came home with all the paint chips and laid them out on the floor. And what you see in the house are all these different happy colors. We don't have any white walls in this house at all. So Benjamin Moore really was where we went for the color inspiration. The uh, curtains we actually found on Etsy. Um, the gentleman who uh, is the Etsy vendor pleaded them for us to the correct widths um, and was really helpful in making these for the room, but they weren't custom curtains made in a workroom uh, in, in Palm Beach. We did have the installers who I work with at work um, install everything because things like that are just what 
gets knocked around first. So we used really good installers, but the actual items that you see are very casual and not custom. Even the artwork actually is from Target. <laughs> So we had fun. We just wanted it to be colorful and happy and kid friendly. The floor plan in this room was tricky to figure out. Um, when we first walked in, there was no furniture in here. So we didn't really know how it was used before. And it kind of, after drawing this in on CAD several different ways, this just seemed to make the most sense. and. Um, it's a fun place to get cozy with our children and friends. <laughs> From here, we can go this way into the dining area, which is part of the living room. It's all open. Um, these here are really fun um, Mary Maguire art pieces. They um, are very islandy and sort of follies, which is appropriate because this house is our folly. <laughs> um, the frames are actually from the Kemble shop, uh, Kemble Interiors, where I work, and we use these as gallery wall frames in a lot of our projects. The bamboo is just perfect for Palm Beach. Um, and then as we come into the dining area, you'll notice that the two chairs at the head of the table are different from the side chairs. Uh, there's nothing more fun than mixing it up. There is something about having all the same chairs, just a sea of chairs around a dining table that is traditional, but sometimes it's fun to have two different chairs at the head that are tall, or even to have benches um, on each side of a dining table just for fun. This mirror is really special to me. Um, I was fortunate enough to work with, to collaborate with Fleur Home, a mirror company that does really magical work. They uh, took an, an inspiration image that I found and were able to create this massive mirror. And it's called the Coco Mirror after my mom. And they actually sell it on their website. And, um, Hopefully I get to do more things with them. But it's, um, it's all wood cutouts, it's layered. Um, it's just taking something that a lot of times is just rectangular and doing something totally wacky with it. <laughs> so that's really fun. To dress the table, we tend to not use flowers. We just go find shells um, in Harbor Island or down the road and like set the table with something a little less traditional. You can have orchids coming out of them. You can do so much fun stuff with something other than just regular flowers. The placemats are leaves. Again, just something out of the ordinary. Um, these bowls were found on the internet just scouring for old vintage um, plates and dinnerware and I love the pop of color. When we have parties here, it's like a picnic. <laughs> Everybody brings something. Um, there's a little tiny oven <laughs> and a four burner stove and a, it's just simple stuff. So, you know, a lot of it is about cocktail hour and some of it about eating good food. <laughs> Mostly about being in a setting that we like to be in. I think neither <laughs> of us would put cooking anywhere near the top of our skills list. So I think what we find ourselves doing is Cece will make somewhere beautiful for you to sit. I'll make you something beautiful for you to drink. But if you could help us out and bring us something good to eat, then, uh, then we're friends. <laughs> There's a couple of things actually in here that I'd love to point out or, or tell you about. So. My heart says my favorite thing in the room is the mirror that Susie designed. However, this chandelier, which I absolutely love, it used to be in our home, but I used to hit my head on it every single day, standing up from the table. So I'm personally ecstatic that it's in the guest house. 
hung a little higher and I so far haven't been in danger of impaling myself on it. My career in interior design uh, probably started when I was eight years old. I loved the idea of designing houses where people lived and I would draw um, island houses. My family and I used to go to St. Bart's every year and the houses there are just magical because you have to go from the bedroom to get to the kitchen, you actually have to go outside. Um, and at that time I lived in Vermont where that wasn't really an option. So I just dreamed my whole life of designing tropical houses. And in high school, I took architecture classes um, and I continued that through college as a minor. And then I went to the New York School of Interior Design for two years and eventually moved to Palm Beach where I felt like that sort of tropical uh, drive took me. And I started working at Kemble in 2011. Um, it's the most magical experience I could have ever asked for. The creativity within that company is just unbelievable and what I have learned in the last 13 years of being there um, has really shaped who I am and also my design, obviously. My background is a little different. I spent 16 years in financial services and, and during this time, you know, Cece and I got married, we, we've had kids and both of our careers were really taking off and what, about a year ago, we were on the beach in Miami having a rare weekend away and just talking about how busy we are and how crazy things are. And I said to Cece, you know, do you think one of us should take a step back from our career and, and be there more for the kids and, and to support the other one? And Cece sort of so, said how happy she is and how much she loves her job. And I put my hand up and that's where we are. So I'm now what we call the lead parent or the lead dad. I devote my time to supporting my amazing wife and spending more time with our amazing kids. Okay, should we go and see the one room that I had a tiny little bit of influence on? <laughs> Come with us to the kitchen. <laughs> and now we're in the kitchen where we also have a little bar. Um, this was a a piece that Nick actually found um, in the Antique Row in West Palm Beach, one of the best places to shop for little antiques, and brought it home in his car, and he was really proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, the floor in here when we purchased the house was really bad vinyl tile. So we removed all the flooring, we fixed up all this terrazzo, and we actually, this was the only room where we changed the layout of the room because here was a stove that was super old, um, probably from 1972. <laughs> when the previous owners moved into this house, there was no dishwasher and the fridge was here. So we ended up just reorganizing this, bringing it up to being a more modern kitchen, but we actually kept the old quirky cabinets, we loved them. This all had doors on it and we took them off and as you can see, we've painted it in two colors. <laughs> Cece mentioned that we went to the paint store where she made a couple of trips on her own as well. And one day she came back and put down a green and a blue and said, what color should the kitchen be? And my immediate reaction was, why not both? So that's why we have a green blue kitchen and. Uh, that's why I feel like this is the one room I had an impact on. What we love about it is that it keeps the 1950s charm. It doesn't modernize the kitchen at all. It actually is a giant step backwards. Um, same with this detail above the window. This was here and is what just makes the house this charming 1950s cottage that we love. We picked up some vintage looking appliances along the way just to kind of keep with the theme of not modernizing the house too much. Um, we have a daughter named Clementine, so this painting is for her. <laughs> I think maybe the biggest impact in this room was doing the countertops. I think changing the countertops in a kitchen 
I don't know if that counts as a big thing or a small thing, but it definitely makes a big difference. The countertops before were sort of a white, would you describe them as vinyl? It or? was a laminate material. We took the laminate countertops away and replaced it with this Corian, which we actually have in our main house too. It's a green Corian and we bought the last three slabs that exist on the planet. <laughs> I hunted this down. <laughs> and, and amazingly, just to give you an idea of my eye for detail, I just realized that we have this in the main house as well. <laughs> the internet is a wonderful thing. I scoured um, Korean remnant websites and was able to find the exact amount that we needed and have it shipped to um, a fabricator in West Palm who came on a Sunday morning and put it in for us. So we were really lucky. <laughs> so in terms of signature drinks, I've possibly oversold myself here as the mixologist. Uh, you can see there aren't that many things accessory wise going on in the bar, but if you like a bone dry martini or an old fashioned, then you're in luck. So we have in our main house, we have an open kitchen in our family room and it's great because we can see the kids all the time. We have little, we have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-year-old. Um, here, what's kind of fun is we can make a huge mess and then go into another room and not look at the mess anymore. <laughs> so in the closed kitchen, you can actually remove yourself from the workplace and go into the pretty room without it all being mixed in one space. I always have an opinion it doesn't mean it's necessarily right or listened to, and I think that's how it should be. And that's the same when it comes to design. There are maybe one or two surprising things, I think, around the house where I would try and stake a claim and say that it was my idea. Uh, but really, I know my lane and I try and stay in it and Cece's the expert and, and um, I defer to her. Let's go to the sunroom, follow us. Welcome to the sunroom. This is the sunniest room in the house because we have two huge windows that are wall to wall and floor to ceiling. And this is, seems to be every man's favorite place to sit even though it's pink. <laughs> um, some of the things that are special in here are the trim detail that you see around the ceiling. Again, this being a 1950s ranch house, there is no architectural detailing. It is literally cement block walls. Um, there's no crown molding, there's no window casing. So it's our job as designers to create interest in a room with nothing happening. So this is um, actually PVC that's been laser cut out by a company called Fuller Architectural Panels. They can create any design that you want and he's really um, a creative guy, the man David who runs it. He makes fences, he makes lattice rooms. He can pretty much make your dreams come true and we work with him a lot. Um, and then behind that we have installed a raffia wall covering just to be a little unexpected. You usually expect wallpaper on the walls, but we put it on the ceiling instead. So a lot of the furniture in here we inherited. Um, I grew up with this coffee table out in Long Island. Um, and the other pieces were just from old other houses. The side tables here are new and then this is a vintage piece from palm beach regency one of the better wicker stores in west palm beach our favorite um and this is just where the kids close the door after dinner and come and watch a movie it's kind of like a little library which is what makes it special what's funny about this room is everyone we know walks in the front door and wants to sit in here i think because it's a small room people actually feel enclosed and happy in here. There's something about the proportions of the room 
um, that just make you want to be in here. Um, I think the location as well. It, it doesn't feel too central to the house, but it feels a great place to, I like coming in here with coffee, reading the paper. When you look through the windows, you can see the sunrise and the sunset. It's an amazing place in the corner. You can see everything that's really going on. We're right on the corner lot here as well with both streets. So it just feels like it's all happening in here. I think we'd owned the house for perhaps two weeks, maybe one week when unfortunately someone actually broke in and smashed the window here, which at the time was heartbreaking. It, we felt like this was a safe place and then we knew someone had, had come in and caused some damage. So that's what led us to actually changing the window and the layout and possibly the whole house to an extent because the big windows we have put in are not just functional, they're hurricane impact, but they let so much light in and uh, it's not an expense we thought we would do. It's a, it's a big one, but it was certainly worth doing. So we use this house uh, for our family primarily. We have a huge trampoline, as Nick mentioned, in the yard. Um, we, we invite people to our house for dinner, but we have dinner here. And we really use it as kind of an extension of our main house, which is just across, you know, a couple steps away. Uh, what's nice is it's always set up for a party. So the idea of just using it for fun is magic to us because you can walk into this whole new setting um, and entertain, which we weren't really doing in our house with three little kids, you know, stuff everywhere. <laughs> First and foremost, probably useful for some little bit of peace and quiet and let the kids run around here outside and make as much mess as they want. But then we, it's almost like we have a part of our house that they really don't go into that is always party ready or dinner party ready or ready for friends to come over, put it that way. We do movie nights here with our kids. Uh, they love sleeping over here. It's like they ask every weekend if they can come over. Um, so it's just a fun, little adventure for us. So this is maybe the room on the inside that we did the least in, perhaps. I think where we put a lot more time and effort into, at least in hours, is the lovely bedroom. So why don't you come and take a look? Welcome to the queen guest bedroom that we call the wicker room. <laughs> We uh, hand stenciled this ourselves and actually our children helped us <laughs> um, create this pattern on the walls with a simple stencil that we taped up and would use a roller. Um, and now you feel like you're in a wicker basket. So that was the most fun thing for us in this room. Again, there are no architectural details. so. We added some by just painting color in the corners and around the window and doors um, just to create sort of like a tape trim that you would see on an upholstered wall. The curtains in here are again Etsy <laughs> um, that we found the pattern just made us happy. It's palm trees. We're in Palm Beach, so West Palm Beach um it just made sense and then we have a wicker headboard that we bought on amazon <laughs> and we just love wicker the use of wicker here is um just a natural material so it makes good sense and these little french specimen pieces were actually picked up by a newer store on Dixie Highway called Heirlooms. Nikki there has an insane collection of antique rugs and probably the coolest rug showroom I've been to where she lays the rugs out for you and your clients with big lighting and beautiful photographs, um, which in the antique rug world is very unusual to find. So, I visit her quite often and picked these up along the way. We had a wood floor in here that was parquet 
and it had a lot of damage from the blue shag carpet that covered it for a long time. And not just from the carpet, right? I mean, if we were standing here nine months ago, I'd be about one foot shorter as we there, yes. had holes in the floor. And... <laughs> there was a hole here. <laughs> um, so we had to fix that and we uh, patched it up and hired a professional painter to come in and put the green paint on so it wouldn't wear off. This was a painting I actually picked up in, when I lived in New York City. Um, that's when I was interning with de Gournay, the bespoke mural company. And we used to go down to the little flea markets and pick up pieces from artists that were there. So that's probably the first painting I ever bought myself. I think the trick to making budget-friendly decor feel high-end is rooting, looking for the diamond in the rough, going to the to the stores where things are priced nicely and not just taking the first thing that's in there, but really looking for something that you actually like. And case in point might be the bedside tables here, which I really liked spending about eight hours building and putting together with their tiny screws, but it was budget friendly <laughs> and uh, it looks, they look great in the room. I almost lost Nick on that one. <laughs> he, he almost quit the guest house, <laughs> but. You're a trooper. <laughs> so welcome to the master bathroom. I think this is perhaps the most vintage room and the least touched during the renovation. Is that fair? Yeah, we didn't do anything to this tile. Um, this is probably from the 1950s. And we painted, we put a shutter in the window and this light fixture is, um, probably the most special thing. It's by a company called Stray Dog Designs. Uh, we do a lot of work in Boca Grande at the Gasparilla Inn, uh, a really special place. And Stray Dog has made huge amounts of completely custom light fixtures. One was 14 feet high and was a swirl of fish. So. They're really a cool company uh, out of Mexico and it's all paper mache and handmade. So I love working with them. And for those who are doing anything like this and, and working to a budget, you'll see that the bathtub is it's set in. It would have been easy, not literally, but easy to rip that out and, and tempting to put a new one in. But actually for what, a hundred or so dollars, we were able to have the existing original bathtub refinished and brought back to life. And I think that was much more fun and keeping the character of the house. And the doors, by the way, the doors for the bedrooms, I think all came from Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Home but, Depot. <laughs> but they made a big difference, just a little, little tweak like that. Should we go and see the master bedroom? Yes. Come with us. <laughs> Welcome to the primary bedroom of the guest house. This is our king bedroom, um, the main bedroom that most people use. And this is where Nick and I have spent the most time working with our hands. So every one of these flowers we actually painted. Um, well, we started by painting the walls blue and then we painted the flowers on top. Um, you can see in here again that we have used a trick instead of a crown molding. We actually painted a scallop around the edge of the ceiling just to create something fun to look at when you're lying in bed looking up at a white ceiling. It's not as much fun as having something there. Um, we picked up a lot of this stuff uh, along the way. Nick and I drove down to Del Rey to get this chair the guy practically couldn't wait to get rid of it <laughs> i think that the furniture in here is fun is everything has its own story the bedside table has moved with us at least one time i think at some time it was in one of our children's bedrooms if not two the desk used to be a different color it was a darker color and as you might see in the house the theme it tends to be brighter or at least paired with white so we had that painted and this was something that was new which I was delighted with when we opened it up and didn't require assembly. 
In here, we have bamboo curtain poles that have a painted detail. And this is kind of a fun thing. So my grandmother was the first uh, person to receive a master's certificate from the Isabella O'Neill School for Hand Finishing in New York City, which is a very specialized um, faux finishing school that um, probably has the best finishes that you can find. And so it's in my blood a bit to get hands on with the paintwork here. Um, and I think that's what really drove us to take some risks in the house is that I just feel like in my soul that at some point I need to start using my own hands to do some of these things. So um, this was the first time I was able to do that and I'm really happy Nick was along for the ride. The rug in here is new, it's West Elm and the bed skirt actually came from my mother's house. She's redoing her house now and had this bed skirt which we were lucky enough to have because again it's a proper bed skirt and it just was a great coincidence that these two things were friendly together. We bought the sheets at Target. They have a little pattern on them, which I always think is fun to have something on the bed other than just white sheets. So the whole thing together really ended up working out. I love most about this guest house is that it gives our three little girls somewhere to play. Our house is a courtyard house. It has a pool in the middle and it has about three feet of grass around the pool where they could play. And we always felt like we kind of lived in a city um, and the, that our kids didn't have the chance to just run around in the grass. And when we bought this and knocked the fence down, I think that was one of the happiest days of our life. And our girls run around here all the time. To be honest, the house was just a bonus. Um, but now that it's here, I think my favorite part of it is that we are entertaining more. Um, it gives us a fun place to go that we didn't have. I agree 100%. Really, the idea behind it was we were sort of torn, well, not really torn, but it was two reasons to buy it was to have the yard for the girls, but also honestly so that someone else didn't come and build a great big house and take that little bit more of our privacy, which everyone likes to have, but in an area that's fast growing, sometimes that can get lost when, when new houses are, are built and doubled up. And then we sort of looked at each other and said, okay, what do we do with the house that's actually on the <laughs> land here? And we toyed with doing nothing to be honest, and just leaving it. And then we thought actually it could be fun to see what we can do, what CC can do. Welcome to the twin bedroom, as we call it, or the blue room. Possibly the one that gave us the most headaches. I think if the rest of the house gave CC sleepless nights, this is the room that gave me all of mine. We made a decision to pull up the floor in here once we realized there was terrazzo, having seen it in the rest of the house. and, and loving it. What we didn't expect was to get halfway through pulling up the top level of the floor and realized whoever poured the terrazzo stopped and what then flowed was just solid gray concrete. So we made a decision initially to glue some vinyl tiles down which weren't very Florida friendly and started popping straight back up. <laughs> so from there we took those back out, cleaned off the glue, um, and then painted the floor blue. We chose the floor color to be a dark blue so that it wouldn't show marks and all the things you don't want it to show. And then we painted the walls and the ceiling in sort of a paler blue. And so we do call this the blue room because it is very blue. Um, but we also wanted it to be a fun kids room if we had friends or family staying here. And so this is the only room that has twin beds. And the fish that you see above, this is something that we love to do 
uh, is to create sort of a series of something interesting instead of just your classic art. Um, so we found a Romanian woman on Etsy, again, who makes these in all different colors, and we hung them in sort of a school of fish pattern just to give the room something fun. Um, but this was definitely the most challenging room. It had wood paneling on the walls that we had to take off. Um, again, the floor, which Nick already talked about. And then it has all the electrical for the whole house. <laughs> we have to live with this. It is what it is. This is part of living in an old, uh, funky house. We actually had to redo all the electrical in the house to add smoke detectors just because it's 2024 and they still didn't have smoke detectors in the house, which was terrifying. So um, this desk was actually here. It sat right here and we thought if this is a kid's room, this is the cutest little place to color or do something. So we, we saved it when we were kind of destroying the rest of the finishes that were here. And this is a, just a neat like rush um, ottoman as a chair that can tuck under there and not be in the way. These are uh, sort of an Indian inspired uh, blanket just at the foot of the bed to add color. And same with the pillows on the bed. Again, not just white linens. We have our kids books in here in case <laughs> we do have a sleepover their favorite thing in the world. And so we're, it's home. This is our, our part of our home. Uh, the dresser is a really neat piece uh, from Palm Beach Regency. And it's just an old classic Florida look with the split rattan and it's good storage. If you actually follow me over to the bathroom, this is where we we came up with the blue room because as you can see, the existing tiles are blue and yellow and we love the funkiness of this. So we wanted to preserve this and basically create a room that would come off of this bathroom so that we wouldn't have to destroy any of what was there. But I mean, I just love like the little soap holder in blue. <laughs> It's so quirky. So this was the beginning and this was the result. The word home for me, home is where the heart is. You know, my, my home, as I will sometimes say, let's go home, let's take the kids to England. But home is here as well. And so I mean it when I say home is where the heart is because I moved here to be with CC, and now we have our little family. I think that wins. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. <laughs> home is where you are, babe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.